praise God. From Psalm number one, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Let's pray, saints. Eternal God, we thank you and praise you for this day. Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the privilege of coming into your house to worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for life and for health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of another day. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for sparing our life. We thank you, Lord, for giving us strength in our bodies. Lord, we praise your wonderful name. You're good, Lord, and you're good all of the time. And we give you praise in the house today. We thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to worship even with those that we cannot see. And we pray, God, that you will enter into this place and into our rooms, Lord, wherever we are, and fill the room with your presence, Lord, and bless us, Lord, as a result of a coming to worship together. Now, God, bless us, Lord, and have your way among us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do uh, as a result of us coming together to worship and hear your word today. And Lord, we continue, Lord, to pray for those in need, Lord, those who are sick and those who are suffering, Lord, those who are confined to their homes, Lord. We pray, God, that you'll stretch forth your hand now to touch and to heal and to deliver, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of calling on your name. And we thank you, Lord, for the assurance that you hear and that you answer prayer. So, Lord, we pray that as a result of our being here today, that we'll be better and that we'll be stronger, Lord, as a result, Lord, of this time of worship and praise in your house and hearing your word, Lord. Now, God, save, deliver, Lord. As a result of your word, Lord, have your way in our life the life of every here, Lord, we pray that you'll do what only you can do, O oh God. We confess, Lord, that without you that we can do nothing, but with you all things are possible. So, Lord, do the possible in our midst, Lord. Do the possible in our cities, Lord. Do the possible, Lord, in this nation and in this world, Lord. We pray for those in authority that, God, you would touch their hearts, Lord, that they would do your will, Lord, that they would seek to please you, Lord, in everything that they do and say. Oh, God, we confess, Lord, that we need you to work out all, all these situations, that you're the answer for the chaos, and you're the answer for the confusion. You're the answer, Lord, for the murders, Lord. You're the answer for the sickness, Lord. You're the answer for the turmoil. So, Lord, have your way in our midst, Lord. Have your way, oh God, in the midst of your people, Lord. Strengthen the people of God across the nation and across the world. Strengthen your people, oh God. Make us more than a match for the enemy, oh God. Help us to stand in these evil days. Help us to make a difference wherever we are. Help us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, Lord. You get the glory out of our lives, Lord. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. But we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Thank God for this. Thank God for this opportunity. Original Church of God here in Indianapolis, we pray that you'll like and share, comment with others uh, so that they'll know that we're on the air and that we're available for them to worship with us today. Won't you join with the praise team? Won't you stand on your feet if you're in the sanctuary and if you're able, uh, for those of you at home, uh, move every distraction, move everything that will catch your attention so that you can fully participate in the worship service this morning. Come on, let's give God praise.
So we call the name of Jesus. He is our healer. Call the name of Jesus. He is our provider. Call the name of Jesus. He is our protector. Call the name of Jesus. Jesus, He is 
hear something about that name. Oh, your master, savior, Jesus, let all heaven and earth. the Lord. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many are grateful for that name? How many glad for Jesus today? Glad that he saved you. Glad that he delivered you. Glad that he made you new all over again. How many glad for Jesus today? From Psalm number one, verse one and two, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we are in your house. We thank you, Lord, for a time to worship you and praise you because there is something about the name Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all the power in the name of Jesus, the power to save and the power to heal, the power to, to deliver, the power to make new. Lord, we pray that you'll have your way during this time. Help us, Lord, to open our ears and open our hearts, Lord, to your word, that your word might find good ground and bring forth good fruit. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God one more praise as you take your seat. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Uh, today, want to preach from uh, this subject, the authority of the kingdom, the authority of the kingdom. Uh, last week, I uh, preached from Mark chapter number 10, entering the kingdom. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus explained to the rich young ruler how he can uh, inherit uh, eternal life through entrance into the kingdom of God. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, 
subject was another king from Matthew chapter number two. The wise men show us uh, the appropriate, correct response to Jesus is to worship him, uh, not to ignore him, not to oppose him, but to worship him. Uh, our theme for this church and for our national body is the unshakable kingdom from Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 28, which says, wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And in a day and a time in which we live of unprecedented shaking and moving and chaos and confusion, uh, God has a kingdom that cannot be shaken for his people uh, to, uh, to have security, to have safety, and to have the assurance uh, that no matter what's happening around, that God is still in control. Today I want us to consider the authority or the rule in this unshakable kingdom. Uh, the word authority refers to uh, the governing force in the kingdom of God. Every, every kingdom must be governed by a set of rules or a constitution in order to help, help maintain order and fulfill its mission. Uh, on your job, you've got an employee manual. That's the authority, that's the rule. If you live in certain, some neighborhoods, certain housing associations, they've got covenants you can abide, you have to abide by. You just can't come and do what you want to do just because you buy the house. I know you might want to paint your house purple, but they'll come see you and you have to repaint your house because there's a rule, there's an authority there. The authority of the kingdom is the word of God. So God runs or operates his kingdom by his word. And it's no, it's no coincidence that from the very beginning uh, that Satan uh, tried to persuade or did persuade Adam and Eve to neglect, reject God's word in order to do their own thing. Uh, and, and today, Satan still wants to do that in your life and in my life. Uh, his goal is to persuade us to, is to reject the authority of the word of God and then to follow uh, our own opinion, uh, our own thoughts, uh, the, the opinions of, of other folks, the trends of the day, uh, uh, personal feelings, uh, intellectual philosophies, or just advice from your friends. But, but, but the, the Bible helps us uh, and reveals why the, why the word is the authority of the kingdom of God. Be, because the word of God comes from the highest authority. Okay. Isaiah the prophet in chapter number 55 uh, says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, he said, God says, my ways are higher than yours and my thoughts are higher than, you, than your thoughts. There is, the, the, the word of God comes from the highest authority. Higher than the Supreme Court, higher than Congress, higher than the president, higher than your best friend. It comes from the highest authority. And, 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 the, and the proof of it is that the word is a never-ending authority. The same prophet Isaiah in chapter number 40 says, The grass withers, the flower fades, they come, they go, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And when popular opinion comes and goes, when your friends come and go, when intellectual thoughts come and go, when, when, when philosophies of men come and go, the word of God will still be standing because it's a never-ending authority. The, the, thirdly, the word of God is an extensive authority. 
The word gives instruction for every area of our life. Where, where you got to pick up a book, one book for this and another book for that. Go over here to find out instruction for that. But the word of God gives instruction for the totality of our life. He, he says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteous, uh, righteousness that the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. The word of God gives us instruction for how to live at the house, for how to conduct ourselves on the job, for what to do in the community, for, for, how, to, for how to relate with civic authority. It, it gives us instruction for how we ought to think. It gives us instruction even for how we ought to feel. It gives us instruction uh, even for our own emotions to hold them in check. The word of God is instruction. It is the authority for every area of our life. So today, so today you and I, we got to ask ourselves, who or what is the authority in our life? I know it ain't, it ain't hard to give the answer right here, right now, while we're in church, because we just finished singing Jesus, 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 Jesus. But, but that needs to echo through every, every, every area, every chamber of our life. You know, relationships, we still saying Jesus? We say, ooh. For our job, for our job, how to conduct ourselves on our job, you know, uh, you know, you know the, you know the lunch hour is an hour, not an hour and a half, you, you know, and they say, well, you know, that, there go that Christian guy, he always take more time for his lunch hour than he's supposed to. But I'm not going to stay there. But, but it's the, the word of God is the authority for our life. And we got to ask ourselves, not just while we're here in church, but when we go home and, and, and in our, in our uh, relationships and, and how we deal with other, other people, is, is the word of God still the authority for our life? In all of these other areas, someone helps us, someone helps us, we are, we are a part of this unshakable kingdom that makes us citizens of, of the kingdom of God. I know that you're citizens of the U.S. and you're really proud of that, but you need to be proud that you're a, a, a citizen of the kingdom of God. You, you can hold dual citizenship, okay, in, in this case. So, so he opens in verse number one, said, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And th this psalm helps to reveal the impact of the word in, in the kingdom of God, this unshakable kingdom. And the first thing he tells us is that kingdom citizens are principled by the word. Principled. Everybody say principled. Principled by the word. Principled means holding to and behaving in accordance with the word. It, it means to obey. Simply, uh, we are, if we are principled by the word, it means we are obedient to the word of God. This, this quote I got from the Believer's Bible Commentary uh, gives, give, gives this on, on this one verse. He says, this verse dismisses the belief that the sinful life is the good life. This world system tries to brainwash us into thinking that real satisfaction comes from indulging in the lusts of the flesh. Television, radio, movies, and magazines all suggest that permissiveness is the road to fulfillment. And when we look and when we listen at the things around us, many people have, a, have adopted that as a truth in their life, that to be really happy, I got to do my own thing like I want it 
to the nth degree. That, that, that wild and wilder is right. And, and there can be no greater fun than letting it all hang out. But, but this verse says that, that kingdom citizens that are principled are blessed, meaning we are fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God. He says, blessed is the man. This verse describes a kingdom citizen's obedience in terms of what he does not do. He does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He does not stand in the way of sinners. He does not sit in the seat of the scornful. Kingdom citizens, uh, to be obedient to the word, have to withstand sin and obey the word of God. As kingdom citizens, we, we, have, we, we have godly principles to live by. That, that means that we just can't live and do like we want to do or even like somebody else does. I don't care what they call themselves or who they proclaim to be in this world. If you're paying attention, more and more we're finding out people that, that should be holding up the light, people that should be the example to us all in the church. We're finding out that they got stuff in their closets that we wouldn't have ever dreamed of. And so it is that you and I, we got to make up our mind that we're going to be principled. I don't care what he does. I don't care what she does. We're going to be principled. We're going to be obedient to the word of God. So we got to make up our mind. We got to have limits. We got to have boundaries. That didn't get much of a response because, because, because I know I'm free. We, we free. And so we don't want anybody telling us what to do for the most part. We got limits, we got boundaries. There are some things, if we're principled, that we, that we won't do. There, there, there are some things that we won't touch. Some things we won't say. Some places we won't go. If, 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 you, if you had some experience in sin before you came and got saved, and, and, you, and you were brought up in the church especially, uh, even when I was in sin, there was still some stuff I just wouldn't do. I, I just couldn't go that far. You know, I could hear my mom and daddy. I, I could hear the preacher. I, I, I knew, I knew that there, there, there needed to be a cutoff line somewhere around here. Even though I wasn't saved, there, there's, something, there's some place I just wouldn't go. And some things I just wouldn't do. But, but the motivation for, for, for those who are kingdom citizens, uh, the motivation for principal living is the fact, first of all, that they love God. Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. And the motivation for us to be principled and, and have the word of God as the rule and authority in our life, first and foremost, is that we love God. Is anybody here today? The Bible warns us of, of, of the danger of worldly systems and worldly living as opposed to the kingdom of God. And the world tells us, the, the word of God, the Bible tells us not to be spotted or stained by the world. Not to be friends with the world. Not to love the world or to conform to the world. And if we fail to withstand the world's sinfulness, we will be condemned with the world. The word of God provides guidance for kingdom citizens. Uh, Psalm 119 and 105 says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light along my path. And, and if we're going to live as, as citizens of this unshakable kingdom, we have to adhere and obey the rule or the authority of the kingdom, which is the word of God. We've got to determine that I'm going to be principled, that I'm going to be obedient to the world. You've got to make up your mind beforehand. You've got to make up your mind before the tempter comes. You've got to make up your mind before you get out there. You've got to make up your mind be before somebody offers you something. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to be principled, that you're going to obey the word of God. 
kingdom citizens are principled by the word. Look at verse number two. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So, so, so secondly, kingdom citizens are passionate about the word. Kingdom citizens, you and I, we ought to have a strong desire, enthusiasm for the word of God. The kingdom citizens, we ought, to, we ought to believe the word, we ought to love the word, we ought to read the word, we ought to meditate on the word. There ought to be some, there ought to be some, some time for the word in our life. Not just casual reading. Not just flipping the pages. You, you know, I, I know we, we can't see it today because all of us got, got the word of God on our phone and our iPad and everything else. But, but, but if you're old enough, think about some of the old saints and think about what their Bible looked like. Frayed edges of the pages, <laughs> tape put together, pages starting to brown. If they started to underline a highlight, practically everything is underlined and highlighted. Be, be, because it was you. They, they, they had, they had a, a, a life uh, that, that was dependent upon uh, and, and that was reflective of their love for the word of God. They were passionate about it. I don't know that we hear, hear people much today say, say that I love the word. You know, a lot of times we say, I read the word, so, and, and, and I know, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not throwing rocks, but, but people that read through the word of God uh, 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 all year long, and they, they do it year after year, and I, I commend them for that. But a lot of times we'll, we'll say that we read it, but we won't say that we love it. We'll, we'll try to impress people by telling them how many scriptures we can quote from memory, but do we love it? So the word is a source of joy. It ought to be a source of joy for kingdom citizens. Romans 7, 22, New, New Living Translation says it like this. It says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I love God's law with all my heart. Love it. Love it. And, and, and we'll only get to that point if we do like... Uh, like the, the scripture, we got to taste and see that it's good. Some of us haven't tasted enough to, to acquire an appetite for the word of God. We, 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 we come try to get a, a Sunday fix. You know, tell the preacher to preach me up happy and tell me something I, so I can go and impress somebody else on Monday. And tell them what, what word I got. I, I, got yeah, I, I got a word, I got a word, I got a word, I got a word, I got a word. Do you love the word? Do you love the word? Do you love the word? A lot of times we kind of we're trying to get a, a word for the situation in our life to fix it. That that that's good and 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 can be applied, but 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 there needs to be an appetite for the word. There needs to be a desire for the word in us. Not not because somebody told us read the word, read the word. But, but if we'll go ahead and if we'll read it and if we'll meditate on it, he said day and night, he's saying it's consistent. It won't let me go. I, I can't get away from it. I delight in it. I meditate on it day and night. Therefore, the word is a priority to kingdom citizens. J Joshua 1 and 8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. He's saying you're going to talk about it. He, he, this, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate therein day and night to observe to do according to all that is written there. He says, you're going to say it, you're going to speak it with your mouth, you're going to meditate on, on it, and then he says, then you're going to obey, obey it. And then he says, if you'll do that, he says, then you'll make your way prosperous, you'll have good success. And most of us, we want to get to the end of that verse real quick. We want the prosperity and the good success. But, but what about the, the word being in your mouth? What about the word being meditated upon? What about the word being obeyed? The kingdom citizen searches a word to discover its goodness. 
Jeremiah 15 and 16, your words were found and I did eat them and your word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart for I am called by your name, O Lord of hosts. How many of us can really testify that the, that the word of God has become the joy and the rejoicing of my heart? How, how many of us can say that, wow, it's quiet. It, it, it needs to get to that point in, in the midst of the chaos that we're in. I, I don't know what else, what else you're going to find as the authority in your life. You can't find it in the laws. We got crooked lawmakers. You, you can't find it in the Supreme Court. The, 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 those guys, they lean in one way or the other. You sure can't find it in the halls of Congress and the presidency. We trying, they trying to get elected again. We, we got to find an authority for our life that's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The reason for, for passing the word is its value compared with, with anything else. Job 23 and, and 12 says the word is more important than food. Psalm 119 and 72 says the word is more important than money. Psalm 119 and 48 says the word is more important than sleep. The word of God is more important than sleep, than, than money, and food. Th that's really how important it is. Now you need the, the food and the money and the sleep, but, but, but if you don't get none of that, then the word of God is more important than all of those things. That's why there ought to be a passion in our life for the word of God. If we're going to be kingdom citizens, part of this unshakable kingdom, we, we need to have a love, a passion, a desire for the word of God that can't be quenched by anything else. This, this, this ain't, you know, when, you, when you're thirsty and, and you just go and, and grab a pop soda, whatever you want to call it, Kool-Aid, and, and that just really tastes good for a minute. Yeah, you know, but, but that don't quench your thirst. Th th those things got, got sugar and everything else in them, and, and that's doing something else to your body. But, but, but what God made to quench thirst was water. And when we get the real thing, we don't need counterfeits. So Psalm 1 reveals the impact of the word uh, on kingdom citizens. The word is the authority in the kingdom. So kingdom citizens are principled in the word. Kingdom citizens are passionate about the word. And then he finishes off uh, this psalm, uh, verses 3 through 6. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He'll be like a tree planted. Everybody say planted. Unshakable. He'll be like a tree planted by rivers of the water, brings forth his fruit in his season. Leaf also shall not wither, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff that the wind drives away. The, the, the godly are like a tree that's planted. The ungodly are, are like chaff that, that the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yes. He concludes it by, by telling us that kingdom citizens are preserved because of the word. We're preserved because of the word. The word planted here implies that it is that that we are preserved. Those that that are uh, part of the kingdom are preserved. They're saved. They're secure. They're protected. They're kept. And the kingdom citizen is preserved no matter what difficulties uh, have come their way in order to prosper and bring forth fruit. The, the word of God commands not just that we would be faithful, but that we would also be fruitful. And God wants us to bring forth fruit in our season. And so it is. Psalm 92 and 13 says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. If we'll be planted, if we will allow God to plant us by the power of his word, then we'll bring forth fruit. We'll prosper. We will flourish uh, so that God will get the glory out of our lives. 
kingdom citizens are, are prosperous. Uh, Jeremiah says it like this in Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. He says, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along the river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Preserved. And that's what God wants to do for us as the unshakable kingdom in this day is to preserve us so that we'll be a testimony no matter how chaotic no matter how, 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 how dry, uh, no matter how uh, difficult things get, God wants to make sure that his kingdom citizens continue to flourish and prosper and bring forth fruit. If everything else and everybody else is drying up, kingdom citizens ought to still be bringing forth fruit. We still ought to be flourishing. Our leaves still ought to be green. And we ought to always be producing fruit in our life. You know why? You know, you know why we're preserved? Because God cares for his kingdom. He, he says in St. John 10, 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I am known of mine. God knows us. He says in verse number six in Psalm one that the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The phrase knows the way means God watches over the plans and the paths of his children to preserve them. And so while everything is going on, God hadn't gone to sleep, taken a nap closed his eyes, went on a trip and forgot about us. While all this is going on, those that are part of the kingdom got to know that God's still watching over us. He knows us. He's watching over us to bring his plan to fruition in our life. But the ungodly are driven away and cannot stand. And while multitudes of, of ungodly men are perishing, the kingdom citizen is preserved by God. And that's why today we need to, to, to be mindful of the authority of the kingdom of God, that, that the word of God is the authority in the kingdom of God. And, 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 and certainly, yes, the word of God ought to come through preachers and teachers and those that testify. But we got to be careful to know it's the word. And so we have to study the word for ourselves. We, we've got to know the word for ourselves, and that doesn't mean that you have to go to Bible school and seminary. Nothing wrong with that. But if you never get to go, then we still have Sunday school. Uh, there, there's still Bible class, some teaching going on. No matter how bad the pandemic gets, there's still going to be some preaching and teaching going on. But you've got to know the word for yourself. And then on top of that, you need to read the word for yourself. You need to have uh, your own devotional time in your own home to read the word for yourself. And I know it's the beginning of the new year. And, and some of us, we've already made uh, the resolution, call it what you want to, the promise or whatever. We're going to read the word of God every day. Was this the 9th of January? And some of us done fell off the wagon already. But, but, but we need, to, we need to, to, to read the word, make it a part of our life every day. There's some other things we do every day without fail. And I believe that we can make the word of God a part of our life without fail every day. So God cares for his kingdom. God strengthens his kingdom. Nahum 1 and 7, the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them that trust in him. On top of that, God delivers his kingdom. 2 Peter 2 and 9, the Lord knows how to deliver the God out of temptation. I'm so glad that God knows how to deliver us out of the temptations and the testing of life. I know I'm so glad that, that while I'm trying to figure out, God's already worked it out. I, I'm glad that, that while men uh, are, are still tripping over the things that are happening, God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. 
So we're, we're preserved because of the word. We're the unshakable kingdom, the kingdom of God. We're the unshakable kingdom. We're built and maintained and strengthened by the authority of the word of God. And this is, this is, how, this is how Matthew writes about it. This is what Jesus says about it in, in the book of Matthew. He, he says in, in Matthew chapter number 7, uh, verses 24 through uh, 27, uh, and before he gets to that, he's already told them, he said, now, not, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but, but he that doeth, everybody say doeth, doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, means that somebody's doing his word, somebody is obeying his word. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we, we prophesied in your name. We, we did many wonderful miracles in your name. We done wonderful works in your name. And he says, and then I'm going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. He's saying you can do some things. But, but, but if I don't know you, you can do some things, but if you're not a part of the kingdom, if you do some things, but with the wrong motive, I don't know you. And, but then he goes on to, to give them this parable. He said, but whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I'll make him like a wise man that built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not because it was founded upon a rock. Same way the tree is planted, same way uh, the, 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 the kingdom citizen has to be founded upon a rock. And everyone uh, that, that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like unto the foolish man which built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, floods came, the winds blew, beat upon that house, just like it beat on, on the other house. But this house, because it was on, on the sand, it fell and great was the fall of it. The house on the rock represents those build their lives on the authority of the word of God. The unshakable kingdom can't be shaken, can't be moved, can't be altered, cannot be destroyed because it's founded upon a rock. And because the word is the authority that, that, that helps the kingdom to stand, it won't be washed away by, uh, by the waters or blown over by the winds. It'll keep on standing because we're part of this unshakable kingdom. But, but the guy who went out and built his house on the sand, it fell because it did not have a solid foundation. And, and many things in this world now are being blown over and, and being shaken and, and being moved and altered because it wasn't founded upon a solid foundation. And I, and I believe in this day that God is just doing this so that we can see those things that are not solid, that are not founded upon a rock, that God is doing the shaking. I don't, I don't believe all of this stuff that's going on in the world uh, that, that the devil did. I believe that God is allowing or God is causing it by shaking it so that we can see the, the, fa the fault of trusting in things that he did not uh, ordain for our life. And so it is that the word of God ought to keep us steady, ought to keep us stable, keep us from falling, keep us steady keep us strengthened. No matter how bad the pandemic gets, I'm still going to trust in God. No matter how crazy they get in Washington, he's still my king. He's still my Lord. He's still my God. I'm going to trust in him before I vote for them. I, I'm still going to trust him no matter how bad the economy gets. I, I've had some tougher times than this. I've had some days where my money was not as long as it is now. I believe I know how to live on some beans if I got to live on some beans if, if I can't get no steak or potatoes I believe I can live off of some lettuce or whatever God God will make a way for me and I'll trust God to help me to do it because his word says that I can make it and the house on the sand represents those that built their, their life on the authority of anything other than the word of God and when we build our house on anything other than the word of God I don't know how 
you expect for it to stand when you see the things of this world just floating by and being, and being destroyed and being altered and being moved day after day and time after time. Uh, God wants us to know that he's still in control. He's still got power. He's still watching over us and he's still protecting us. In the storms of life, philosophies will fade, but the word of God will stand. In, in, in the storms of life, the myths are, are going to fail, but the word of God will stand. And it doesn't matter what's going on, what's coming or going, when, when things get tough, all these other things that are not founded on the word of God, they're going to find their way to destruction. Fables, traditions will come and go. Theories are going to fizzle out, but the word of God will stand. Knowledge will be vain, but the word of God will stand. Experiments are going to break down. Ideas are going to flop. Money will bankrupt. Connections will disconnect. Plans will fall flat, but the word of God will stand. Schemes will crash. Strategies will be scrapped. Speculations won't work, and feelings will empty out, but the word of God will stand. Blessed is a man who's got his trust in the Lord God and in his word. And while everything else is going down, the kingdom of God will still be standing. While everything else is toppled over, the people of the kingdom will still be testifying. When everything else is flat, broke, flat out, the people of the kingdom will still be standing on the word, will be standing on the rock. Let the rain come and let the winds blow and, and let the waves come. People of the word, the people of the God, the people of the kingdom will still be standing. I'm glad to be a part of the kingdom of God. I'm glad to be a part of the unshakable kingdom in a time where everything shaken. I'm glad I can stand. I'm glad on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking stand, sand. I dare not trust the sweetest friend but wholly lean on Jesus name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Will somebody say planted? We've been planted so we'll prosper. We've been planted to bring forth fruit. We've been planted so that we'll be his witness. We've been planted to be his light. We've been planted to be his salt. We've been planted to be his witnesses in days like this. The authority of the kingdom is the word of God. Thank God for the word. Will somebody give God thanks for the word? Give him thanks for his word. The sad, the, 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 sad, the sad part of, of this text, he says, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. If there, if there ever was something we could get, we could, we could understand that God continues to use uh, these, these pictures from nature, these pictures from everyday life so that we can understand what he desires from our life. If you've ever had a tree die, it can stand for a long time. It, it can be dead and, and dry, no leaves, no fruit ever come up on it. And, and it can stand. It can, it can stand. I, I, I've got some, I got some, I got a, a, a tree behind my house now, uh, but, but it's in this little wooded area, and, and, and it fell uh, last year, a year before, but it's been up there since I moved there. And that tree and a whole lot of others in that, that little wooded area, they did as they can be. But you know what? When strong winds come, when storms come, they start to fall. 
And as long as they don't fall in my yard, I let them sit there. And sometimes we can, we can look like, we can give the appearance that there's life. But it don't necessarily have to be. And many times the testing of our life, the testing are, are, are the adversities when the winds of adversities and the contrary winds begin to blow. They come to show us really what we got on the inside. And when those, when, those, when those dead trees fall, usually they are split open and you'll see that there's not life in the middle of them. That there, there's death in the middle of them. There's still some bark on the outside, but, but nothing on the inside. T today, today I want to urge you, today I, I want to urge you to be a part of the kingdom of God. To submit to the authority of the kingdom. To submit to the word of God. You don't have to understand everything you, you, you read. You, you can seek to understand it. And there are plenty of Bible helps to, to help us to understand. But if you've got a desire to know the word of God. God will help you to, to know and to understand. And you can always come to Sunday school. Oh, yeah, that, that went over like a lead balloon. Come on, you can always come to Sunday school. Listen, th things are, things, times are too difficult. Times are, are too chaotic to, to be standing on something that's not going to last. To be building your life on something that's going to wash away. Build your life on things eternal and hold, hold to God's unchanging hand. Won't you stand today? Today we, we extend this invitation. Someone wants to make the decision today to build your life on the authority of the word of God. You, you, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, Jesus as Savior, you shall be saved. T today, if, you're, if you've not made the step to trust the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary to bring salvation to your life, trust by faith. Today you can do that. Today you can make that change in your life. While we stand, if you, you decide, today I want to be saved. Today I want to be a part of the family of God. Today I want to give myself to the Lord. I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to be a part of the family of God. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. Today... Today, that's what I want to do. If you, do, you make that decision today, won't you raise your hand where you are in this sanctuary at home? Won't you make that decision while you have a chance, while the Lord speaks to your heart? Won't you do that today? If you once trusted God, if you once walked with the Lord, but, but you've broken your covenant with him and you live contrary to his will and today you want to come back home, won't you raise your hand? Won't you say yes to the Lord? T today, if you need special prayer for your life, if, if you've been struggling, if there's a matter in your life, if you need special prayer today, won't you, won't you raise your hand? Praise God. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, of coming in the house to hear your word and to worship you and to sing your praises, Lord. We thank you that you're like no other, that your kingdom is built on your word that is the authority for our life. 
and your promise is to keep, your, your promise is to secure, your promise is to save, and we thank you. And for everyone, Lord, who needs something special from you today, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you meet every need. You saw every hand that was raised. You know every desire of our heart. So, Lord, we pray that you will touch and bless and heal and deliver as only you can. We thank you for the privilege of being called your people, Lord, being kingdom citizens, part of this unshakable kingdom, Lord. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And days and times like this, Lord, you're there to keep us. You're there to protect us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're mindful of us, that you, you know our ways. You're watching over uh, your plan for our life. So God, help us today. Strengthen us. Touch the lives, touch the bodies of those who are sick in their body. Whatever the sickness or illness is, whatever the affliction is, Lord, you're able to heal. You're our great physician. And today, Lord, we do it. God, for those who need you to intervene, Lord, in their home, with their family, with friends, or other relationships, Lord, we pray that you'll, that you'll help us. Give us the wisdom, Lord, give, and even give us patience with one another. God, help us. Oh, God, somebody... Somebody needs your help on their job or with their finances, Lord. Somebody needs you to intervene. Somebody needs you to, to, to be their advocate, Lord. Lord, help them today. Help them today, Lord. Don't, don't let your children suffer, Lord. Come to their rescue. Lord, help them on the job, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In this time and season of life, Lord, we trust you, Lord, for our health. We trust you for healing. We trust you, Lord, for the wisdom that we need. Oh, God, have your way in our life. Have your way in our life, Lord. And cause us, Lord, to be your ambassadors, your, your representatives in the earth right now and today. Help us to make a difference everywhere that we go that men might see our good works, and then glorify our Father which is in heaven. We thank you already. We give you praise for everything that you do for us. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise as you take your seat. Come on, give God praise. Thank God we pray that you've been blessed by the word of God today and by uh, this time to worship together. We, we thank God for those who have joined us virtually. I uh, want to remind you, uh, if you access our website, ocogindy.org, ocogindy.org, uh, you can find information about our church uh, as well. Uh, you can find information to give. Uh, they'll put the information up on the screen so that you can uh, know how to give. Uh, those of us in the sanctuary, we will give as we exit out of the sanctuary today. Uh, so let's thank God for those who have joined us virtually. Let's praise God. Amen. Praise God. 